going to move on now and hear from Tim Hoffman. Tim is program director at the New York State Clean Tech Venture Exchange and NYSERDA's EIR program at Columbia Technology Ventures. The Venture Exchange matches C-level business executives with clean tech startups in New York. The NYSERDA's EIR program is a mentorship program providing coaching and advisory services to clean energy startups in New York. Welcome, Tim, and take it away. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you, Peter, for inviting me to speak today. Uh, while much of this conference uh, is going to be about financial capital and deploying financial capital to solve the problems that Peter outlined mm -hmm. uh, earlier this morning, um, and, and that's where I spent most of my career so far as an investment banker, I'm now focused on human capital at Columbia Technology Ventures, uh, which is a tech transfer office of Columbia University. Um, I run a program there called the NYSERDA EIR program, uh, as Paul mentioned, which seeks to provide mentoring and CXO matching services uh, for clean energy and climate tech companies in the state of New York. We work collaboratively with uh, NYSERDA-funded incubators and accelerators uh, that are under uh, Katie and her team's uh, mm -hmm. direction, as well as other university-funded and entrepreneurship programs throughout the state of New York. As many of you know, the, the road to success for um, startups and, and such startups is, is long and hard. Uh, the path to commercialization can be like uh, climbing a mountain. The missing piece is often uh, business experience and connections. The founders are left uncertain of, of the best way forward in some cases. Uh, the right mentor or uh, management team member can make a tremendous difference. Our goal is to accelerate the commercialization of clean energy and climate tech companies, providing such mentors and CXO candidates mm -hmm. who can make, make a difference. In short, we help them climb the mountain to success. First and foremost, uh, the NYSERDA ER program offers one-on-one -on -one mentoring services to qualified startups throughout the state of New York. We have approximately 80 experienced professionals among them, Peter Fasaro, who's done a fantastic job for his, the companies he's worked on through our program. Um, they're all motivated to help clean energy and climate tech companies advance on the pathway to success. Generally have more than 20 years of business experience and bring sector and functional expertise to the challenges that, that uh, our startups face. Our one-on-one -on -one, uh, assignments support uh, a wide range of startup needs, everything from uh, identifying a product market fit through uh, establishing a business plan, um, planning market entry, and getting ready to talk to investors and seek investor, private investor capital. Our project started around 40 hours of uh, EIR's time spread over three to six months, um, and then expand from there to meet the changing needs of the startups we serve. Um, to dirt, today, we've... Um, uh, served uh, over 125 companies in our program uh, since taking on uh, the program a couple of years ago um, and serve all types of technologies, that, that, including all of those mentored by, mentioned by Peter and uh, Katie earlier uh, this morning. So as an investment banker and entrepreneurship program leader, it's clear to me that um, the weakest link in, in some startups is management. Almost like in real estate where it's location, 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 in startups are seeking funding, it's management, management, management. I recently came across a study by the National Bureau of Economic Research where they surveyed over 800 venture capitalists and asked them uh, a number of questions, including this one. What is the most important factor in making an investment decision? I wasn't surprised by the answer, but I was surprised by how much. 47% of the over 500 uh, respondents said it's team as the number one factor for making a decision. Uh, while product and technology, business model, industry, markets were 37% combined. Finding the right team members or co-founders is, is extremely challenging for a lot of startups. Uh, many founders feel like they're on an island alone to sift through the stacks of resumes, even if they have the opportunity to, to hire an executive recruiter to, to help them narrow the search. They're alone to figure out interviewing, 
assessing the talent, the motivations of the, the, the candidates, how they'll fit with the team, what kind of compensation structure should they offer, can they offer that would attract somebody? It's a difficult task even for the most experienced human resource person. Well, the ER program um, addresses this challenge by um, first identifying the skill gaps of, of the startups, uh, accessing the existing team from a skill and experience point of view, where the startup needs to go in, in the near future, and what gaps exist, what, what's missing from the team. But this is only a small uh, part of the puzzle. Um, you know, uh, it's not just the skills and, and, um, and backgrounds that are important in many cases. It's also how they're going to interact with the existing team members in a collaborative and effective manner. Um, so in recognition of this, and, and um, we have uh, we use a tool called the Predictive Index, uh, which has been refined over the last 50 years plus, and looks into what motivates people. Uh, this tool helps us to understand the, both the existing team uh, and the makeup of the existing team, as well as CXO candidates, CEO candidates, CFO candidates, COO candidates that might be, you know, be interested in joining a company. It helps to inform better interviewing and ultimately, when, when there is a potential match, facilitate more effective commun team communication. But even if things look great on paper, there's still a lot of risk, especially when we're talking about team sizes, company sizes of less than 10 people. Um, and so to help reduce this risk further, um, we, when there is a potential match of a startup with a CXO candidate, uh, we can help to facilitate reducing of that risk by funding a trial project that will benefit the startup regardless of the outcome, but give both the startup and the CXO candidate a chance to build trust and make an informed decision when the time comes. We've assembled a pool of about 100 candidates. Uh, they're serial entrepreneurs, business execs with entrepreneurial aptitude, and all motivated to join a, a clean energy or a climate tech company. This part of the ER program has, in, in a little under two years, achieved seven part-time or full-time matches of, of CXOs with the startups. And we have another seven uh, uh, trial projects underway, which we hope will result in additional uh, teams being formed. Um, in addition to our mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring and CXO matching, we, we also provide grant writing services to startups, uh, initiative that was greatly expanded this year. Um, pitch coaching, helping startups prepare for investor meetings, for uh, customer calls, and uh, for pitch competitions. We have uh, introduced skills labs to help fill the certain gaps in the ecosystem to further assist the incubators and accelerators programs that, that we our program serves um, uh, and on topics such as team formation, finance in a COVID-19 world, grant writing, and coming soon um, on preparing better for the investor dialogue. In short, our program is designed to, to um, provide the right team advisors to make a tremendous difference on the, on the path to commercial success. Again, we have assisted in the long under two years of administering the program, over 125 startups uh, on 250 um, plus projects. And uh, in less than two years, the startups that we have assisted with, with DIR mentors um, have achieved private investment and non NYSERDA grants of greater than 55 million. I'm gonna stop there and, and open up for questions. All right, well, we have a question that was submitted a little earlier, Tim. I, I don't know if you want to take a stab at it. It wasn't specific to your remarks today, but the question is, how much does the carbon emissions related to peat mining come up on all of your radars in your work? It is our experience that not many people talk about this, even though peat bogs and the largest, are the largest carbon sink on Earth. Uh, this person works for a company called Pitmoss, and they, they are finding that there's not enough people, not enough people know about this issue, or 
that there are solutions like theirs on the market already. Uh, so they want to, they, they'd like to know how they can better educate people on this issue. So I'll open that up to anyone on the panel. Well, I can't say that we, we've um, uh, come across a, a company that, uh, that, you know, that has that as a, as a business model and a solution. I'm not sure, I'd be interested to know how much, uh, uh, how many peat bogs there are in, in New York State, uh, which is where our efforts are, are, are focused. Um, but we do work with a wide range of technologies to reduce um, uh, carbon emissions and or the carbon footprint of, of various activities. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll share also, Paul. Um, sure. thank, Jump in. thank you, Tim, for your awesome, as usual, description of the EIR program. It's seriously one of the best programs we fund. Um, so uh, thanks for the question. I just wanted to say, so first of all, I, I through my email in the chat and I'm happy to pass forward um, more information about your company to our, our internal team working on natural carbon but this is something we see a lot of companies struggling with right now and I'd recommend um, looking into the following resources. Um, one, if you haven't already, the American Carbon Registry, since they're doing so much work to look at the total value of different solutions when it comes to car carbon abatement. Um, second of all, Carbon 180, which is a firm um, that's really pioneering both the biological side and technology side of carbon sequestration solutions, and they may be able to help you, or they may have some good content on their website that, that could direct you towards additional resources. Um, third of all, you know, NYSERDA just launched a new program um, called the Carbon to Value Initiative uh, with our partners, the Urban Future Lab, Greentown Labs, Fraunhofer, and the Canadian Consulate. And that's a program that is going to focus on looking at carbon tech and other carbon, carbon abatement solutions through an accelerator model. So, you know, wait, wait for more on that. Um, we're hoping to announce some news soon, but that's a nice way to plug in um, in the New York ecosystem if you believe that your, your company may actually be sequestering carbon or, or um, you know, drawing attention to novel approaches in that regard. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much, Katie. Now, Tim, I do have a question specifically for you. And this viewer is wondering if you provide this level of assistance to startups located in incubators and centers through the university systems, such as startups at Stony Brook University's Advanced Energy Research and Technology Center. Uh, the, the short answer is yes. Um, we serve all uh, promising clean energy, clean te uh, climate tech uh, uh, companies, startups. Um, many of them are in incubators uh, uh, that are funded by NYSERDA and other incubators that are, are not yet to be funded by NYSERDA or funded by universities. Um, and we, in, at Stony Brook, we work very collaboratively with the uh, CBIT program, uh, uh, Clean Energy Business uh, Innovation Program uh, there at Stony Brook. Okay, and Tim, another question for you. What tools can you recommend? Oops, what tools can you recommend to use for sustainability internship programs? Um, well, uh, NYSERDA has, uh, and, and then the ponds are, are going to escape me now, but had a, uh, a program where they funded um, internships with, with uh, clean energy companies in, in the ecosystem early this summer. Um, Columbia University has, uh, through its um, Tamer Center for Social Enterprise, has a number of opportunities for, for internship at, at various companies, including startups. Okay. All right. Well, if we have no other, oh, I'm sorry, we've some other questions come in, Tim, while you were answering those. And here's a question for, I guess, for, uh, Tim, for you and everybody else on the panel, how has clean tech entrepreneurship been impacted throughout the COVID pandemic? So I, I would say um, the number one impact early on, especially was uh, the lack of access to, to labs and lab space. Um, and initially um, made it more challenging to, to talk to investors, although that is, that is changing over time. Um, some of the companies, however, um, you know, pivoted to uh, COVID solutions in the, in the near term. Examples include um, 
basically using their technology to create um, hand sanitizer um, and PPE uh, to, to help address uh, the you know issues related to, to COVID-19 um, and bring some additional cash into the into their operations to, to fund fund the business. Um, you know, obviously, um, many of them also had a more difficult time um, during their customer discovery process. It was harder to reach people to talk to prospective customers um, as a result of, of COVID, um, as well as continue engaging on pilot projects that uh, required physical, you know, uh, presence on, on pilot uh, project locations. Um, but uh, our you know, entrepreneurs we found on balance to be hugely resilient in, in uh, addressing this, um, you know, but I, I can mention those kind of broad brush issues that many of them have experienced in the last six months. Okay, and Tim, someone is just requesting uh, where they can go to find more information on the EIR program. Uh, so I'm sure you'll be providing that through Peter to anyone yep. who's interested. I'll put that in the chat chat function after after my session. Okay. All right. Well, if we don't have any additional questions for Tim, Tim, I want to thank you very much for your presentation today. I'm joining the first session of, of the Wall Street Green Summit. Mm -hmm.